Senator Merkley, uh, you're up for questions. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to our, our witnesses. Uh, Mr. Sund, uh, on January 4th, uh, MPD arrested the leader of the Proud Boys for destruction of property and possessing high-capacity firearm magazines. And on the following day, on January 5th, the FBI issued a report through the Joint Terrorism Task Force, which includes going to the U.S. Capitol Police. And that report noted that on far-right uh, media, the threats included things such as the comments such as, be ready to fight, Congress needs to hear glass breaking, doors being kicked in, blood from their BLM and Antifa, slave soldiers being spilled, get violent, stop calling this a march or a rally or a protest, go there ready for war, we get our president or we die, nothing else will achieve this goal. Did you get that FBI intelligence report? So uh, I addressed that right when we started. The United States Capitol Police Department did get that report. I was just advised of that in the last 24 hours. That report made it from the Joint Terrorism Task Force over to our Intelligence Bureau, over to an, a uh, sergeant there, and uh, uh, ceased moving forward at that point. Uh, no leadership, myself included, over at Capitol Police was made aware of that at the, at the time of the event. So there is, you've referred in your testimony uh, to the individual who is the head, uh, John Donahue, the director of intelligence on the U.S. Capitol Police. And did, did he receive that report, but he did not pass it on to, to you as head of the USCP? Again, I have no knowledge that he received that report. I've been told it uh, went over to a official the rank of sergeant uh, and didn't move any farther from there. Um, okay, well that's very concerning. Were there not procedures for the in head of the intelligence on the U.S. Capitol Police to get the intelligence report, to review it, especially when there were significant other indications of potential violence, and, and make sure that, that you, as the leader, had the, that knowledge on which to develop additional plans if additional plans were needed? Uh, I'm sure that's something that they're looking at in their uh, current after action. Yes, there, there is a process for it. Uh, but again, that's, as I mentioned before, that was raw intelligence that was coming in. And again, taken in consideration with everything else, none of the other intelligence was showing that we're looking at this type of a, a broad insurrectionist type of uh, event with thousands of armed, coordinated individuals. Uh, I, know you're, I know you're saying that, that the folks are looking at that now. But my question was, did you have a procedure for important intelligence to be brought directly to your attention, and did that system break down? And that's why you did not see the warnings about blood being spilled, get violent, call, you know, be ready to come or, and die. Yes, there is a process in place to make sure that uh, critical, important information is brought uh, up, to the, up to the leadership. Again, that was uh, something that would have gone through the, the development and the analysis of that information. Okay, so you're saying the intelligence side of U.S. Capitol Police failed to get that into your hands. Let me turn to uh, rules of engagement. So officers are out there, and there's an expanded perimeter which you've, you've referred to, and you have those kind of uh, perimeter fence that look like bike racks, uh, and in a normal situation, those tell peaceful protesters, this is where you stop. Was there any sort of um, discussion uh, or training about what to do if protesters started picking those things up and opening holes in that perimeter? What were the rules of engagement? If I'm a police officer that day on the line for the Capitol Police, how was I supposed, was I trained like what do I do when, when those perimeter fences are breached? Do I use spray? Do I use a stun gun? Do I use tear gas? Uh, what, what am I, do I have a clear sense of exactly how I'm supposed to respond? Yes, there is, there is a rules of engagement, there's a use of force uh, policy, and there's also a civil disobedience unit training that has to do with when you have a non-compliant group, how you deal with non-compliance and gaining compliance, which would include uh, hand control techniques, the application of chemical, uh, chemical spray, and then impact weapons. So on that day, you issued rules of engagement that included what specifically? I'm an officer, what was I supposed to do if those, those barricades were breached? There's rules of engagements that exist. They weren't exi uh, issued just that day, they existed. But they don't vary from event to event based on threat analysis? No, sir. So that perimeter, 
you said got larger, which meant police officers were spread out over a larger area. So once it was breached, what are the directions to the police uh, on the team to be able to retreat to a defensible point? So what we had is we had what's called an incident command system established. You have an incident command for both the exterior, the resources on the exterior of the building that would provide those um, officers, those CDU units with specific directions on where to go, what's the next step, if you're going to retreat up to the Upper West Terrace, which I believe which is what they were told to do, uh, as well as an incident command system inside the building handling the joint session and activities going on inside. So I'm out on the, 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 the plaza and the, the crowd swarms past me. I have an assigned place to go to retreat to that is defensible? The incident commander would be providing direction to people in the field on what, where to retreat to to uh, make the next stand. So no, ad, no advance infor, information. And how do you avoid the situation of those who are guarding a door, closing and locking the door, and leaving police officers stranded outside of that locked perimeter? Um, so your question, how do you prevent that? Is that what you're saying? How do you prevent that? If there aren't, if you've got folks who are guarding a door and protesters are trying to get through it, so they're trying to lock that and prevent it, and there isn't a pre-plan for how to deal with officers who are stranded outside of those doors, how's that handled? Have, do you have drills on that? Do you have set instructions on that? Again, that's something I would look for the, the on-site official, the on-site incident commander to provide those officers with directions where to uh, relocate to. Okay, let me put it this way. Have you ever held a drill to respond to this, this situation where a crowd pushes past the exterior barricades? Not, not this level of uh, situation, no, sir. To what level have you had such drills? We've, we've done uh, various exercises with uh, people, you know, um, activities on the, on the grounds, during civil disobedience training, how to handle uh, riotous groups. Uh, okay, thank, thank you. I'm going to turn just a seconds left to our, our former Sergeant of Arms for the, the Senate, uh, Mr. Stenger. Uh, at the time that the, we were in the, in the Senate chamber and the protesters, the rioters, uh, reached the uh, perimeter of the Senate, uh, there was a very quick rush to try to lock the doors, and there's, there were people searching for how do you lock these, and there's many entrances on the balcony. Have there ever been any sort of a drill uh, with the Sergeant of Arms team or with, in partnership with the Capitol Police on how to secure the doors uh, to the chamber as a last point of defense? Uh, yes, sir. They, they, at least once a year, they hold a chamber action drill uh, where they would work together with the uh, Capitol Police, uh, with the doorkeepers to do a lockdown so they know how to, when, when they should lock down and when, uh, when they should do it. So that is done as an actual drill where people have to run, get the keys, lock the doors, they know what doors they're supposed to guard, are they supposed to guard them from the inside or from the outside and so forth? Yes, sir. That's and when was the last such side. drill of that nature conducted? Um, I'd, have to, I'd have to go back and check, but they try and do it once a year. Okay, I think I'm out of time and I thank you very much to the chairman.